this is Pete or Kenshin1913 along with Mom. And this is another Cooking with Kenshin1913. Just in time for Easter. What are we making? Today we're making an Easter bread. It's um, kind of like a sweet bread, um, something that you would eat for breakfast or a snack, not something that you would eat with a dinner. So it's not like a dinner roll. It has a little bit more uh, sweetness in it. Right, and it, this this is the first episode. We're gonna start using yeast to make stuff. And it's also called ubin, right? Yes. You call uh, ubin. That, I, I don't know where that came from. This is a recipe from my grandmother on my father's side. And so, I grew up with it uh, forever. I don't ever remember not having it. Yep. Yeah. So let's get cooking. Okay, so I'm just, we're gonna go through the ingredients. It's pretty simple. It's flour, sugar, eggs, pinch of salt. We use vegetable um, Crisco uh, shortening mm -hmm. and your yeast. Mm. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flour in my mixer. Now, if you don't have a mixer, you could do this all by hand. Before I had a mixer, I used to do everything by hand. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put um, a pinch of salt. Yeah, don't worry, you might hear Stella in the back, that's all right. And this is a half a cup of granulated sugar. And what I'm going to do is to mix this around. You could use your mixer for it if you choose to. Right, and we're, for this one, instead of using the paddle, we're gonna be using the hook attachment. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in um, three tablespoons of the shortening. And I kind of judge, I use, as you, you can see, it's kind of a big soup spoon. Mm -hmm. um, this is more or less a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna use pr pretty much a table, three of them, you said? Mm-hmm, so I, I kind of see how I judge it. Right. And now, is there a uh, substitute for this? Let's say you don't have Crisco, could you use like... You know, I, I, I... I can't tell you that. Um, it's pretty much like lard, isn't it? Or something like that? Uh, Vegetable oil, but yeah. Um, I guess you could try butter or margarine, mm -hmm. although I have never done so, and none of my grandmothers yeah. did it either. So it was always with this right. um, recipe. Now there's always a ubin off going on during the year <laughs> between my mom and my aunt Elaine. The other uh, the other person you see on the show occasionally, she she makes ubin as well. She can't make it this year, so we're making it. Yeah, and and what happens is um, when it's rising, this is a bread, so you have to let you know once it's all mixed, you have to let it proof rise the first mm -hmm. time then you punch it down and you make whatever shape that you're going to make um, our house sometimes can be a little bit on the cooler side because of the um, heating that we have we have a uh, forced hot air so you know when the furnace yeah. goes on it blows the air around yeah, it's, it's house, warm it's and it's a big house yeah. now on the other hand my sister has an older house but they have radiators mm -hmm. so the house stays warmer because the radiators stay warm mm -hmm. and also she'll put her bowl of um, dough on top of the radiator to rise yeah, that's so you, you kind of get that little bit of heat under yeah. it all the time yeah we'll talk so, about this more as we're going all right we're gonna mix this together and right. I just want to make sure that everything's plugged in right so we have um, our dry ingredients and our shortening so I'm going to turn our mixer on just to get the shortening kind of incorporated in, in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this uh, this episode, like I said, is a little more advanced because this is the first time we're going to be, well, not the first time we are working with yeast, but we're showing you yeast. Yeast can be kind of like finicky, depending on where you get it from. If you're buying it from the package, usually those are pretty good. You have to always look at your expiration date, yeah, too. Yeah, because yeast is like a living thing. So right. you got to uh, make sure that you're, um, you're using the proper thing. Now, one thing my mom forgot to mention was we're using room temperature Crisco. Like, usually we keep in the fridge to keep it 
good, but we took it out because everything pretty much needs to be room temperature. Yeah, because you'll shock your um, yeast if it's not. If right, it's right, cold. right. And it'll give you a problem. Right. It, now, I can't, it does seem like it room could Room temperature eggs as well. Yeah, it does seem like it could be difficult, but don't worry. It's actually Okay, fairly so easy. now what I'm doing is I'm kind of making a well in the, in the middle of um, the flour. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm going to add in my eggs. But yeah, um, don't be intimidated by yeast. Is all no, it makes lovely things. Yeah, you can make a lot of great things with it. Like my dad makes pizza dough with it, which we we more than likely will be showing. You can make a sweet dough and make your own cinnamon buns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeast is the king. Sticky, gooey yeah, buns. Yeah, my mom and Vic took a, a course on the on baking and stuff, and we might eventually get to that. Okay, right. so I'm not gonna incorporate these. Yeah. And once again, use your hook. So, another thing, as we were talking about room temperature stuff, uh, as we were talking, right, heat is a, is a real big key in this uh, recipe, in the essence of proofing. Now, once again, my mom was talking about what proofing is. It's pretty much uh, when, once you get the yeast and it gets like active, and you put it in the flour and it does its thing and makes a dough. You gotta let that sit and proof. And pretty much what that is, is you gotta cover it up and you gotta put it near a warm spot and uh, let it let it rise. And uh, the yeast does its thing. Yeah, you gotta let the yeast do its thing. Okay, so what you're getting kind of is uh, almost, see, it looks kind of crumbly. Mm-hmm. So that, this is now has the egg and the uh, uh, Crisco and the flour. So now I'm gonna add my yeast. Right. Now we put in three quarters of a cup of warm water and it, so this is also kind of a trick. I use tap water. Mm -hmm. You don't want it too hot mm. because then you'll kill the yeast. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it too cold because it'll kill the yeast. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like testing a baby's bottle. Mm -hmm. I usually put my pinky finger in it to feel it. It's just got to be nice and warm. Right. So I'm going to get my water. So I have my two um, packets of yeast um, yeah. ready. I cut the corners. So I'm going to put it in here. Mm -hmm. See, when you're working with yeast also, there are some recipes that you don't have to do this. You just put it in with your flour mixture mm -hmm. and then add um, warm milk mm -hmm. um, to it or warm warm water, whatever the recipe is calling for. Yes, yeah, so my mom has three quarters of a cup of water in Goldilocks temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Right, and the other thing that they tell you to do with yeast is to add a little bit of sugar to it. Yeah. It's like you're feeding the yeast. Yeah, who doesn't like to feed yeast? This, this bread has such a lovely taste to it. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I've always loved it. Our whole family now, loves it. And um, I could eat a whole loaf of it myself. <laughs> right. Now, let me ask you a question about yeast. You're using active dry yeast? Is yes, this what this is? This and is then... dry yeast. You can buy um, this. It comes in these little packets. There's usually right, right, three right. of them Since connected. Um, they come in different um, brands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, the, some I like a little bit better than others. You could also buy fresh yeast, mm -hmm. and um, that's what what my husband uses when he's making the uh, dough for the pizza oven. Right. Uh, and that you 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 have to get from a different vendor. Like he goes to a specialty store, mm -hmm. or um, if you know somebody who's in the pizza business, sometimes they'll give you a little bit. Right now, then you have to break that up into like ounces. Mm -hmm. And when you have leftovers, you can actually put that in the freezer, so it right. makes it go to sleep. Right. So I got a question about this yeast. This is like active. Like it, it you don't have to wait wait for it to like bubble or whatever. No. Okay. So I'm going to add the yeast in here. There's, um, as we mentioned, there's tons and tons of recipes that you can use yeast for um, breads, um, savory yeah, yeah, dough, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
you know, the sweet doughs. Right, so, so let's pour it in. And you're pouring it into the well pretty much? Into the well. Yeah, yeast isn't yeast. Like I said, don't be afraid of yeast. It's just you gotta be a little, you gotta be a little careful with it and cautious. But and it, and it I could think be your best I life. think it is um, in some cases also um, where people live because I have heard like in different areas of the country they really can't get a good Italian bread mm -hmm. or things that we grow up with here on the East Coast and think nothing of it. And part of that is, I think, the, the compound of the water and the minerals in the water. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different, you know, this is, um, baking is um, chemistry. Mm -hmm. and, and there really is a science behind it all. Right. So now you're just going to kind of mix this until it's all, all like, incorporated. All, all incorporated. Okay, so here's our dough. Yeah. And as you can see, it... I wish we had like you know touched uh, yeah. it, it's not gooey mm -hmm. um, it's just nice to the touch right. so I'm gonna um, and I have a little bit of the uh, little extra down here and we're just going to incorporate that into the dough right. that didn't get blended in this and if you find if you too. find that the you know it's not incorporating um, good when you're mixing it yeah either by uh, machine or by hand, you could always add just a little bit more um, liquid, a little bit more of the warm water to yeah. it. Warm water, <laughs> yes. Don't, yeah, and you, you can still use the cup. You can use the cup from the yeast too. So yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of different factors when making this stuff. I mean, you gotta worry about, you know, heat. You gotta worry about maybe you got the, uh, some dough, the yeast, of course, making sure that that's, uh, you know, that's good. It's a, that's why this is a more advanced recipe. You can try it. But once you get the hang of it, man, oh, man. Yeah, baking, some, some, baking stuff is really, really awesome. Some people love to make their own uh, cinnamon buns and right. sticky buns. Right, especially, um, especially since, like, you know, people don't know what the heck is in all these breads nowadays, you know, and, and, and you know, in certain ingredients and stuff. So... It's nice to be able to uh, make your own thing and you know everything that's going in it. Okay, so here we are. It's been a few hours. It's been a couple of hours. And Ooh. see, this has doubled in size. Okay, okay. So that's exactly what we want. The mm -hmm. yeast is work doing its job. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we want to do now is what? We're going to take this out. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to shape it into what um, I want. Right. So, okay, now some people. How do you take it out? It's going to deflate, and, and that always kind of makes me sad. Mm -hmm. so, it, some people make their um, dough in um, a loaf pan. Right. My sister in law, she does it in a loaf pan. Right. So she doesn't make anything really fancy. Mm -hmm. So she lets it do its first rise, and then she cuts it this in half. Puts it in a loaf pan, lets it rise like a bread. Right. Now, uh, if you enjoy the smell of yeast and nice, like, fresh oh, big bread. Yeah, it yeah, smells then, delicious. Then in it here. smells great, for sure. So I'm actually going to break this in half. Right. Because I'm going to do um, braids. Yeah. And I'm going to make um, two separate of the little breads. Mm hmm. Okay. Hmm. So one one batch of this can make one really big bread. One really big one or two small ones. Right, and now we have our we're gonna use our sill pad here, our sill lined baking sheet. You can use parchment paper as well. Parchment paper works wonders. Mm hmm So now what you're doing? You're rolling. Rolling it out. Like a snake. So one thing, uh I'll I'll discuss this while my mom's rolling. One thing that you can do is, uh, yeah, it's a way you guys start in the middle and roll it outwards like that. Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to braid it. Uh, one thing you can do, since it's an Easter bread, what you can do is you can boil hard, uh, what is it, hard boiled? Hot, you do hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs, right. And we used to color them. Right. Well, and then okay. and then I'll show you when I when, when I start to braid this what I used to do. Yeah, but okay. the thing about it is, is pretty much since it's Easter, Eggs, resurrection, blah, blah, blah. Or actually, I didn't really know how that works. But 
Anyways, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put some eggs in, in and she'll show you where. What I'm gonna do, actually I'm done. Oh, that's it? You so, only need three? Three braids. Oh, I see, I thought it was, Never mind then, we're not, we won't go back, let's just keep Um, here. And you're gonna do like you were braiding your hair. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Okay. So. So you put the ends like that. Now I usually do mine long, mm -hmm. but you can make it uh, your braids longer mm -hmm. and then actually turn it and make a circle. Right, right, right. Yeah, I've seen some like that. But yeah, this is an Easter bread. I'm not sure why it's an Easter bread, but my okay, mom Okay, now usually, usually what, what we would do is, and I'm going to show you with, I'm just going to take one, a little piece off of here, okay? So what you would do with your egg, if you mm. had the egg, okay, yeah, you're gonna do hard you, you would take your egg and kind of nestle it in the middle there, mm -hmm. okay? And then you would take a piece of the, of the dough, grab the end. roll it in a little rope, mm -hmm. and actually I'm going to show you. Um, I'll be right back, okay? Okay, so I'm, I have one of my granddaughter's little plastic, plastic eggs. eggs, okay? Just so you can see how So it's you're done. gonna, and you nestle another one in there. Yeah, you do two, that's it? Maybe three? Well, I mean, it depends on how big you're making this. If you're using right. the whole dough, this is gonna come bigger, or you're gonna make it round, and you could place uh, several them. eggs in right. it, okay? So it and then what, what I usually used to do is, Go like this because when this cooks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, now you got to remember this is going to grow again. Yeah. Okay. And so then when this cooks, you could actually um, bake um, the hard-boiled egg in the you know because you're going to be baking the bread, mm -hmm. and and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is then after you'll see when I decorate it all, it looks really it would look really really pretty. Yeah. But we cannot put a plastic egg in the oven, mm -hmm. so that was just for demonstration. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is uh, kind of get this back into here. Okay. Now we're going to put it on our sheet. We're going to put it on our sheet. And then we got to, again, let it rise, right? Yeah. And this time here, um, you can actually let it rise a little less. So I kind of pat it down again. Mm-hmm. And we'll, you got to cover it again? Uh-huh. I'm going to cover it again. And then... Let it rise for... Let it rise. Maybe an hour minimum. Okay, here we are. This is the second rising. See how nice it's all doubled up in size? Mm -hmm. So, this is going to go in a 350 degree oven. Right. It's going to get until golden brown. Right. About a half hour, right? About 20 minutes, half hour, depending on how your oven, you know, cooks. And, mm -hmm. it'll, and again, golden brown. Right. And then, didn't you have something you wanted to say about because you made a second batch, right? Yes. Um, I made a second batch because I'm giving some of these away for the holiday and um when you're working with dough it's so hard when we were talking about consistency because my second batch came um a little bit more stickier than the first batch so they there's never really any two batches of dough that are exactly the same so if if you're making this and it's a little stickier and you could tell because it'll stick to your hands more you could always add just a little bit of um flour mm. so once all right again, so we're going to put these in the oven and we'll show show you what they look like when they come out yeah, and then we'll ice them up okay so here we are um took it out of the oven it's still warm golden brown golden gorgeous. brown see in the on the back side very nice and we have um we made this, the other the, one the right. second one as well right yeah see so yeah very nice they come out very nice okay for um the the glaze or frosting Whatever. if you want to call it um is confectionery sugar mm -hmm. this is about a cup of confectionery sugar mm -hmm. you could you could um add either water or milk to it right um and you just put a little bit in because 
some people have a tendency to put to put too much liquid and then you have to keep adding confectioner sugar because mm. it um you don't you want it kind of runny mm -hmm. to coat um the uh, bread but you don't want it you know so runny that it won't stick right and um, for the holiday, if you wanted to add a little bit of food coloring, yeah. so if you wanted to make it pink yeah. or yellow or, or okay, um, you know, green, you could you could do yeah. that as but well. Pastel colors or whatever you want. More? No. See, this is why you, it's always better to have less water in the beginning. Yeah, you, you could use food coloring if you want. Reds, blues. Well, not blue. Blue's not an Easter thing. Should we put some in since this isn't going to be the real one? No. You sure? Yep. I mean, so, my mom, my mom. Uh, I like traditional white. Right. My mom's been arguing. She's like, <laughs> we got to make another one because it's like, I can't eat this on Easter because it's already been cut and it's going to be warm and you got to eat it. Because she usually eats it. You want me to put just a dab? No. She usually eats uh This is going to be perfect. And so this, I had a quarter of a cup of liquid right. we use an eighth yeah so, so half of half of a fourth and you could even use less this could could be a little thicker mm -hmm. but see it's um this this is gonna work good right so anyways she was telling me while we were baking and everything she's like i can't eat you know you have to let the ubin cool I, I guess you gotta let it cool is that what you were trying to get mm -hmm. at you pretty much gotta let it get the room temp but we're just gonna wait and, and chow down on it now. Now this this is perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly the consistency that you want. Right. So now you can just drizzle it on. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need anything special. I take it and um, you can just do like that. Right. Or I'll just put some on and then I take my. Um, Your brush. My brush. Mm. And brush it on. Right. Well, yeah, there you go. And now... And I have a little it. extra, so if I, you, if I wanted to coat more on the side... Yeah, you can always add And it. then I use these little non-Purell sprinkles. Yeah. Um, sprinkle it on top. Now, one of the things that when you're wrapping this up to, you know... Um, because usually I don't frost it until the morning that I'm using mm -hmm. it. But um, what you could do is um, don't cover the whole thing because what will happen is the icing will start weeping. Right. So it gets softer and almost kind of totally comes off of it. Right. it it's not, it just doesn't look pretty. Um, so what I do is I usually take my tin foil put it under the bread and then kind of pinch it off but leave an area open on the top mm. so that it, the um, icing can breathe. Right. And as you can see on the icing, see it, it kind of hardens mm -hmm. uh, on the on the bread. Yeah. Okay. Let's cut it. So I'm going to actually cut it in the middle. Right. So you can see. And usually use a serrated knife. Right. This is still a little warm. Yeah. My mom, this is uh, totally. I'm a little nervous. She's 100% <laughs> against it. You don't cut warm bean. <laughs> yeah. So look at that, huh? The aroma is lovely. Yeah. And, and it's still warm. So I bet you. A nice freaking piece of butter on there and boom, bang, boom. All right, so here's our Easter bread. As you can see, very lovely. Let me just see how nice and airy mm -hmm. and delicious it is. Can you see it? I don't want to drop it. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'll hold on to this. Put it over here and let us have some we'll switch. And And you can have softened uh, butter on it. Yeah. If you'd like. It's nice and light. Not bad. You know what? I'm getting older, <laughs> and this isn't as bad as uh, I remember. It, because probably because I've had other rolls similar to this, but it's very good. Mm -hmm. You get like a nice yeasty flavor. Mm -hmm. It's very simple I to do. Eat, I could eat the whole loaf. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's good. It's nice. You know, you get this nice chewiness from the dough and all that good stuff. So yeah, make this Easter bread if you got the time. If not, 
Have it any time. It doesn't have to be for Easter. It could no. be any time. I traditionally even make it for of the Christmas holidays as well. So Right. So this has been another Cooking with Kenshin 1913. I have been Pete, or Kenshin 1913, along with... Mom. And we'll see you in the next Cooking with Kenshin 1913. Enjoy and happy eating.